What is going on everybody, Estas here, welcome back to another video. So in this video, we're going to be doing an overall market update, looking at the Dow Jones, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ. We're also going to be talking about one trade that I made today on the 16th of January in 2019, and we're going to go into my personal opinion on if it's a good time to buy UGAS. We saw a very big dip today in UGAS and a very big dip in NASDAQ natural gas and we are expecting cold weather over the next one to two weeks there's a big snowstorm in the midwest it's getting very cold over here in new jersey it's going to be about 10 degrees next week so with all this cold weather coming is it a good time to buy you guys we're going to talk about that in this video but before we do feel free to smash that like button if you guys do enjoy the daily content that i'm producing if you guys do find it valuable it really does help the channel if you do smash that like button and I really do appreciate it. So let's get right into today's video guys starting off with the SPX. So yet again guys we had a green day today but it wasn't too crazy of a green day. We see the SPX, SP, uh, S&P 500 here. It closed the day up around $5.80 up around 0.2%. So on the close you know not too crazy of a day in terms of the SPX, but still it is a green day for the index. And if we see over here, guys, the Dow Jones was up around 141 points, a little bit better day than the S&P in terms of percentage. It was up around 0.6% on the day and the NASDAQ we can see the future right now is down around 12 points but if we want to see the performance of the NASDAQ of what it did um, today we can see around 930 we opened up at around 6690 we popped up around 50 points all the way to around 6637 but we ended up closing the day pretty flat in terms of the NASDAQ literally up about five six points on the day you know very minuscule percentage gain on the NASDAQ, probably up around 0.1% on the day. So nonetheless, guys, it was a green day. And let's talk about some technicals here on the SPX on a couple of different time frames so we can get a better understanding of where the market is moving. And it's very important, in my opinion, guys, to do your market analysis every single day, whether it is at night, you know, pre-market hours. Well, preferably, you should be doing it every single day, multiple times a day, right? pre-market hours to see how the large caps are moving so you can plan out your trades for the day you know after market hours so you can see what happened that entire day plan your trades for the next day and of course during the day right live action that's a very great time to be doing your market analysis to see how everything's moving so in terms of the SPX right now guys we are at that same resistance that we were talking about in yesterday's video at around $2,620. We actually got rejected there today. I do believe we actually touched $2,625 actually, a little bit above that resistance, but we ended up getting you know pushed down from here to the close of the market. So we pushed up to a higher high in terms of this one day, one minute when we did hit um, the $2,625 level, but uh, pretty much from 2.30 to 4 o'clock, the entire power hour, plus 30 minutes, we were downtrending to the market close. But we are technically, guys, you know, at that resistance that was a previous support back in here in the middle of December. And obviously, we had that big red month in December. We broke that support, making it a new resistance. And from the day after Christmas, guys, the 26th, that's when we found our low in terms of the SPX. And we've been recovering ever since. And it's brought us back up to this resistance point. So we are, we're at a very critical spot right here, guys. I've been talking about this over the past market update videos every single day. And, uh, you know, if we do end up breaking this, which I do see potentially happening, right, the next spot of resistance is going to be at around 26.35, with then the next spot being at the 180 simple moving average here on the 180 chart. And for us to really get out of this downwards trending channel, like we slowly have been, you know, 
breaking that 180 SMA is going to be a huge, huge point, guys. Let's say we do end up breaking these two resistances, but we get rejected by the 180 SMA. The downtrend in terms of lower highs is still intact at that point, right, guys? Because if we did get rejected here, you know, this would technically be a lower high from the previous high, and that's just a continuation of the downtrend that the S&P 500 has been on over the past couple of weeks, really months at this point from the beginning of October. So in terms of the 180 chart, guys, that's what I'm looking like or looking at rather. And on the 20 day, one hour chart, we bounced on the 50 SMA two trading days ago. We pushed for that higher high and we're, you know, currently still up trending guys. It's very obvious here. It's very evident from this chart that we are up trending in price. So I do expect, you know, potentially, um, you know, if we do end up popping up above this resistance tomorrow to see a pullback a little bit for the SPX. And obviously, if we break the 50 SMA, that's going to be a good reversal pattern to the downside in terms of the 20 day, one hour chart. And then obviously, the 180 SMA, if we broke that as well, um, you know that's going to be a good sign as well. But for those of you all that don't know how to use um, simple moving averages to your advantage, well, let me give you a quick little tip here. So this is the 50 SMA, right? And this is the 180 SMA. Whenever the 50 SMA crosses above the 180 SMA, that is a bullish sign, right? The 50 simple moving average is crossing above the 180. And we can see that happening here, guys. Pretty much back here is when it happened. And that's really just showing us that it's bullish, right? And you can do this on any time frame. It really does work, right, guys? When we see the cross, you know, a lot of the time we're seeing that, you know, stock ETF index uptrending in that point in time. And you can also use it the opposite way to really identify a downtrending pattern for an ETF, a stock, or an index. And by this way, you know, instead of the 50 SMA crossing above the 180 SMA for an uptrend, well, a downtrend would really show the 50 SMA breaking below the 180 SMA. So pretend the 50 SMA was right here, for example, right? And we saw it, you know, cross the 180 like that. That really just shows that, you know, that ETF stock index has downwards momentum and it could potentially start downtrending, right? These are very useful techniques, very simple, right? A lot of people out there know them, but just to reiterate them in this video, very good techniques to, you know, identify an uptrend, identify a downtrend, and you can use these on many different time frames. So let's quickly look at the Dow Jones, guys. Let me quickly just clear this drawing set because it does get sloppy over time when I don't clear it. But on the 20 day chart, very similar to the SPX, right? It's on an uptrend. It bounced at this point, higher low, right? Higher low here as well. It bounced on the 50 SMA, pushed to a higher high. So everything is looking good for the uptrend in terms of this 20 day, one hour chart. And if we look at the 180 chart, we can see another clear resistance right where the Dow is right now, guys. And this is from the sell off that we saw back in June, right? We saw a sell-off back in June 2018 from around 25,000, mid-25,000s, all the way down to around 24,200, and that's exactly where we are right now in terms of the Dow Jones, guys. You see it right there. You know, we had another green day pushing us towards, even closer towards that resistance from back here, and of course, it is a resistance from back here as well, back in November when we did have that sell-off all the way down to around 24,000. 200 to 24,300 dollars. So, you know, that is what I'm looking at in terms of the Dow Jones, guys. Very important to keep an eye on this resistance level. If we do end up breaking above it, which is a decent chance of happening right now, if we do continue this uptrending pattern, the next resistance point is going to be at around 24,750. And then, of course, it's going to be right around the 180 SMA as well. And if we do break that 180, SMA, that's going to be a very good sign of a reversal pattern to the upside, right? And just to quickly look at some longer term charts here, guys, I talked about this in a couple of videos ago, but I haven't in this in the, in the 
past um couple of videos. Well, you know, the major indices, guys, the Dow, the S&P, and the NASDAQ, they all held simple moving average support levels on their long, long-term charts. And I'm talking about three-year, one-week charts, right? 20-year, you know, one-month charts. They all, they all held, you know, very critical support levels. If we can see back here to the SPX, very similar, right? And, you know, on the closer chart as well, very similar. It held that 180 SMA and bounced nicely. And, you know, if we took every fundamental off the table, if stock trading was simply off charts, right? If we had no fundamentals, no economy, nothing, right? Nothing. If this was just simply off charts, someone would say right here, okay, this could be the reversal for the uptrending pattern, right? We had our significant pullback. We bounced on the 180 SMA, and we're seeing a bunch of green candlesticks starting to form. On the 20-year chart, you know, we saw the bounce. We're pushing back up as well. But, you know, with fundamentals in the game, guys, in the state of the economy that we are currently in, with growth slowing down, the trade war, all the stuff that we've been talking about on this channel, um, you know, this doesn't really matter to me that we are bouncing on the longer term charts, guys. We can really turn to the downside in the matter of a snap. We saw it back in October and we saw it in December. So don't let these charts confuse you guys. Although the longer term charts are pointing to a reversal to the upside right now, you know, there's still a bunch of stuff out there that's going on that could weigh in on the market. And I'm really just patiently waiting. I'm still waiting for that day where we wake up and the futures are down 2% like they were, you know, back in this time period where we pretty much woke up every single day with the futures down a crap ton, right? I'm waiting for the day, guys. The day is going to come, trust me. But we just have to wait and see when it does come. So in terms of the NASDAQ, very quickly, guys, I don't want this video to to be too long on the 20 day one hour chart we're holding that uptrend very nicely we push to a higher high and if we take a look on the 180 very quickly to see some uh you know key resistances that we are at right now well we broke this one right here which is a very good sign right this was a previous support at around 6500 we shattered above that with the next one being right around, I would say, 67, 65, right? And that's a little bit, you know, we're about 100 points away from that right now. And if we do break that, guys, that is a good sign that the NASDAQ's actually reversing to the upside, right? And in terms of the three major indices right now, the NASDAQ is actually looking the best, in my opinion, in terms of a technical basis. But again, when trading stocks, guys, you look at the technicals and, of course, the fundamentals what's happening in real life not just looking you know at the charts so so that is what the markets are looking like as of today at the close on the 16th of january in 2019 so to get into my trade with you guys guys it was very very simple i pretty much caught it on this huge pullback right here so i was waiting for a potential bounce back recovery play i ended up getting in i believe right around here at about $57 and 30 what was it like 5735 I believe or maybe it was 5745 I think that was it 5745 I initially had my limit order at around $60 because at this point guys I thought it was reversing in price because we saw the break above the EMA here and I set a limit right around $60 I believe <coughs> it was around 1230 because I saw the potential of it holding the EMA as a support level rather than a resistance point as it has been over the past couple of hours at this point in time. And, you know, obviously we started to see some strong resistance right here, which led me to just lower my, um, uh, what's it called? My limit sell order to $59. So I had it at $60. That would have put me at a, what is it, like a 3% profit, right? Let's take a look very quickly. I was in at around 57.45. 5740 that's close enough so if i went to $60 yeah that would have been around a 3.5 or rather a 4% profit if i did but i ended up lowering my uh limit order sell to $59 and i took around a 2% 2.7% profit and again why i did this is because although we did break the EMA line here we were having trouble breaking the 50 SMA we saw it as a huge resistance we had trouble breaking it here guys. 
guys when I had it at the 60 limit order. We had trouble here again. And as we started having trouble the third time, that's when I lowered my limit order and I ended up taking my profits right as it crossed below $59. And that's the beauty of limit orders, guys. You set the order and it fills unless you're using, you know, Robinhood. I've heard some problems with Robinhood, but I use Fidelity, guys. It fills like that, right, guys? It fills very quickly. Took my profits and that was it for the day in terms of my trading with ticker symbol UGAZ. So if we're looking at you guys on a longer term chart here, this is the 20 day, one hour chart. You may ask yourself, is this a good dip? buy opportunity. The weather is getting colder. We do have a snowstorm in the Midwest, I believe, and we do expect around one to two weeks of extremely cold weather. So let's take a look at this article, guys. Let's see, you know, what we can expect for natural gas. So this is an article that came out on Monday, last updated yesterday on Tuesday at 8.59 a.m. And we can see from the title here, natural gas prices spike 13%. And this was back on Monday. So natural gas prices spike as the market gains confidence that the severe cold gripping the United States will persist longer than previously thought. Henry Hub natural gas futures for February rise more than 13% to their highest since December. A return to $4 is uncertain but will remain a risk as heating demand rises and natural gas stockpiles come under renewed pressure. So natural gas spiked on Monday, guys, like we do know. And with this weather coming, the cold weather, this could push up the prices of natural gas to start to test previous resistances. And if we take a look, guys, you know, back on this chart here for natural gas, and for those of you guys that don't even know, natural gas is what you gas trades based upon, right? If when if natural gas is going up in price, well, you gas is going Going up in price as well. And this is the gap up that they were talking about, I believe. Was it this one? No, this was not the gap up. The gap up was, I believe, on this day, the 14th. We went all the way from around 348 all the way up to around 370. And now we pulled back all the way back to around 340, which actually was a previous support level. As we can see back here, guys, in December of 2018, right, we pulled back from 393 all the way down to around 332, which we did end up getting close to today, I believe, earlier on in the day. And we held that support level here. We held it again here at, as well at around 330 on the 28th of December before gapping down. And obviously, when we did gap down, you know, that became a new resistance point. And then we gapped up here. This was back on the 11th of January. We gapped up from 315 all the way to 330, that started to act as a new support level. It's kind of like a cup and handle pattern right here, guys. You see that? It's literally like exactly a cup and handle pattern. So we, you know, we held above the 330 here, pushed all the way up to 370. We pulled back. We we're holding the 330, 340 level again. So on a technical basis, guys, there is room from around 330, 335, all the way back up to 360, in my opinion, because we'll be literally you know trading within this horizontal channel that we do see drawn out here and if we extend that a little bit you'll be able to see it you know a little bit easier here on this uh, natural gas chart so actually no that's not that good uh, right here guys you guys see what I'm saying if we do end up filling this gap to the upside tomorrow after the natural gas report remember 10 30 eastern standard time AM is when that report does come out. If the report does show to be in favor, you guys, right? And we slowly start to see the push up in natural gas. We slowly start to fill this gap. Obviously, that's going to be a good sign for you guys. So is it a good time right now? 
to buy you guys. I personally think that it is a pretty good time to consider buying you guys. I don't give you guys advice on what to buy. This is strictly an entertainment purpose channel, right? I'm here giving you guys, you know, my journey, my experience, my thoughts. Do not take this as advice to go buy it unless you do your own research, right? It's all about you doing your own research and making the decision for yourself. Don't buy based on my opinion. But I personally think, guys, especially with this big dip that we had, the open gap that we do see that we're holding above now after market hours with a potential of filling, as well as the very cold weather that we are expecting, right? There is a very solid chance, in my opinion, that natural gas does end up closing this gap, meaning that you gas could be probably will be a pretty good buy tomorrow and again do your own research guys please do not buy on my personal opinion please 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 don't and wait for that report 10 30 a.m eastern standard time we're gonna see how natural gas is you know, uh, acting towards the report, right? Is it going to be shooting up? Is it going to be shooting down? Typically around 1030 every single Thursday when that report does come out, natural gas does move pretty quickly. So keep an eye on it tomorrow. That's what I'm personally going to be doing, keeping an eye on it around when the report comes out. I'm going to analyze the report when it does come out, then make my decision from there. But as of right now, guys, you know, judging off the chart, judging off this article, you know, a lot of severe cold weather is coming. The Midwest is experiencing a snowstorm right now. A lot of, lot of cold weather. We can see here the forecast has turned significantly colder. It's really the magnitude of the cold and the confidence and severity longer term that changed over the weekend. So pretty much guys, that is my opinion on you guys. Is it a good time to buy? I personally think it is a decent time to consider buying right now, guys, because, you know, all the stuff that I did say is pretty valid. Let me know what you guys think down below in the comments section. If you guys do want to check this article out, I'll have it linked down below in the uh, description box. And, you know, just let me know what you guys think. Is it a good time to buy in? What do you expect for tomorrow, right? We got rejected by the 180 SMA, but again, we do have a nice gap that we could potentially fill tomorrow, and that's what I'm going to be waiting for in terms of natural gas and you gas. That's pretty much it for today's video. I started out the day today pretty slow, didn't see too many opportunities out there. Then I started to see the big sell off in natural gas, and that is when I ended up taking that bounce back play on you gas. But pretty much, guys, up until around 12 p.m., I thought today was going to be a day that I wasn't going to trade, which is not a bad thing, right? We always talk about, you know, you don't have to force trades every single day, right? You want to wait for the opportunity to come to you before taking advantage of that opportunity, right? I did not see any opportunities early on in the day. Therefore, I didn't trade. But once I saw the sell-off in you guys, I saw this as a potential opportunity. If it did find support and slowly start to push up, that is what I ended up doing, guys. I traded that very quickly for 2.7%. And I did very well today based on my standards and my goals. So I hope you guys did enjoy this video. If you did, Feel free to drop a like, leave a comment, and subscribe. Follow me on Instagram as well as on Twitter and join our Discord group chat as well as our Facebook group. All of those are linked down below in the description box. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Please do your own research when trading, when investing. I hope you all enjoy the rest of your night. Peace out.